Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. And still summer. Still summer. It is indeed. And uh, I'm not giving in. We are uh, definitely heading into the fall. I like yeah, that when we I start like to well, get that can... little crisp well, in the I'm, air. Because it was so warm in August, I kind of like that, you know, in the morning it's cooler or in the evening it's cooler. Not so much today. I opened the door no, this morning and I was like, really oh, humid. it's a little yeah. thick. And I had mowing to do so. What's happening, Brandon? So uh, something, something, <laughs> something happened. happened over there. We're just going to ignore that. Um, and hope for the best. Um, so. But, you know, politics and oh. election season is up and running. Of course, Tammy and I are both running for office. Tammy's running in Ward 10, and I'm running in Ward 11 like for the House weird. of Representatives. Yep. And Neither of us have a primary. So our... I did look up the ballot because I never really know. And if I don't know, you you know voters don't know. Our names do all appear on the ballot, yes. which I expected because if you're doing a write-in, there'd have to be some place to write it in, right? So you're on the ballot. I'm on the ballot. Brittany's on the ballot. You know, Dan's on the ballot. You can come out and vote for us for, for sure, but we're not the reason to come out and vote oh, two weeks from today. Right. Because uh. there's... Well, I, I mean, mean, I'd like to see how many people came out and voted for us. I, uh, well, you know, and I think it's it's interesting. Yeah, we don't have a primary. No. I might, um, you know, uh, yeah. So, so, so the reason I brought up yes. uh, election season is because it seems like, you know, we are, uh, the loonies are coming out of the woodwork. Yep. And I got a really offensive and sort of uh, disturbing, I guess, uh, voicemail Yesterday, I believe it was left on Sunday night. I only picked it up yesterday afternoon, uh, you know, in between the calls from the Boston Globe and the New Yorker. <laughs> this guy decided to let me know how he feels about me. Um, so I thought it'd be useful just for folks back home to actually hear the, the level <laughs> of, of sort of vitriol. And, and what some people seem to think is okay discourse i would also like to suggest i mean it came from a restricted number mm -hmm. but if you perhaps recognize the voice of this um, <laughs> charming gentleman be sure to let me know you can email me directly at carla at carla and uh and maybe we can track it down the number was restricted but if everything goes according to plan i believe our producer is about to play us the clip Typical ignorant South African still. You were egotistical, narcissistic, I mean, just utter scum of the planet. It's too bad your mother didn't have an abortion. You're psychologically damaged, probably from daddy not around giving you enough love from growing up. Your ideas aren't new. You're just utter scum. Just utter worthless scum. You're detriment to society. You're psychologically damaged, bull jack on everybody else. That's all your type are. You're just ignorant, conservative. You're worse than conservatives. You're just, you're more ignorant, more self absorbed. You just know nothing about society, about humanity. And again, you bet your mother didn't abort you, but at least you're getting old. You look like a gremlin. You look like you live under a fiscal floor. Get cancer, suffer a month, and die before the end of the year. What the actual heck was that? So uh, for folks who maybe couldn't hear it on oh the my. Facebook feed, uh, basically this guy is very sad that my parents did not abort me. Uh, my mother hates me. My dad, I have daddy issues. You are um, a detriment to society. society. I'm um, scum. Your type, um, I'm not sure what your type refers to, but your type is awful and worse than conservatives. I jotted that down because I was like, I'm, uh, I mean, I, th I actually found that part kind of funny because it almost sounded like someone had a, a punch list. list of people he was calling and yes. he was like, oh, wait, no, this one is a libertarian. We yeah. don't like uh, not a conservatarian. What? We it don't just, like, you know, it is true. There it, is a there is a vileness and I do think it's gotten worse over the years. I don't think so, COVID helped. I so, think COVID so, made people angry and now people feel they can say and do 
whatever they want. So, so I mean, and and honestly, I mean, I'm going to assume this is sort of in response to the LPNH, so that's the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire, put out a bunch of tweets that, you know, I personally, that's not the style I would use. I don't think it serves anything. I think tactically it's kind of stupid. Yeah. I let them know that. No one wants to listen because everyone's egos are engaged. Yes. And yes. so, like, we're going to double down on it because that is how... Uh, you act when your ego is engaged instead of actually taking a moment and maybe going, mm, you know, I think this did what it needed to do or got the attention it needed to get and now we can move on from here. There was an entire weekend of doubling down. So I know other people were receiving messages well, like that, was, but let's start with, I'm not a member of the Libertarian right? Party. That's the one that always blows my mind is when people go, well, the Libertarian Party said, said or did this and I'm like, well, good for them because that has, nothing to do with either of us but also let's not like be this guilt by association because you know and i love to tell reporters this and i i do it tongue in cheek but you know if someone will criticize something where it's this group thing right oh lp did this right but no one treats democrats or republicans that way no democrat or republican is raked over the coals because someone else said something they didn't oh. like right no it's not not, as, that's, not to say to the not, same degree, not to the no. same sort of group think think right because you know I, 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 every you know every war criminal is a democrat or a republican <laughs> well i know i know um just in the past um in the past few days same thing um our good friend victoria sullivan sent me a copy of a um message i'm not sure if this was po i think this was posted on fa in a facebook group um from brandon lemay who's running for state rep i assume in ward eight I don't know if it's a morning, to be honest. Um, big reason why I decided to run for state rep is because my current one, Mark Warden, is a free stater. I really don't like these folks. If you're a Republican, I can reason with you. If you're a free stater, you're an American traitor. And she, Victoria went back and said, I'm sure you've actually talked to Mark and you act, are basing this on Mark. You know, and of course he it does. It no. himself, but it's like, so wait. And she goes, and by the way, he's not running. Like, right. So... Again, because somebody chose to move to New Hampshire because they were intrigued by the Free State Project and then established themselves, established a very large business, hired staff, everything. Because you did all that and then you chose to run in the party that best aligns with you. This is the part that I don't understand. Just because you have any coral, any connection, maybe you moved to New Hampshire because of the Free State Project, but that doesn't mean you have to be a registered member of the Libertarian Party. Why are people discriminated against and not allowed to put themselves in, join a party voluntarily that they feel well, most aligned with them? I, I don't get that mentality. I, I think it's it's much broader than that. I don't actually think the parties matter at all. What we're now seeing is sort of a vilification and bigotry it's towards awful. free staters it just in, in, general. in general. And, you know, and... and, and uh, I'm keeping a file now, folks, and I will play every single one of these messages well, it's, publicly. It's, so, you know, either uh, keep them coming or stop it. But here's the thing. You don't fight racism with racism. No. You don't fight bigotry with bigotry. You don't, it's, it's, I don't even understand what's happening. You know, I tweeted out this morning and I'm like, like genuinely, I want liberty and freedom for mankind. Right, for everybody, and not somehow just somehow for... that makes me an extremist, right. then I have issues with the way people are actually like functioning on a cognitive level because it means you aren't actually thinking. If you are anti-liberty, therefore anti-free stater, you are, I don't know, definitionally insane. Because what is the opposite of being against liberty? You are pro-slavery. Right. Right. I mean, we're literally like the abolitionists but the, uh, we're, where we're I going, mean, don't give over yourself to in the New Hampshire here, when people talk about like, well, what's the difference? You know, why should I vote Republican in a in state let races or whatnot? And, I'm, and it's a good point because we are the opposite of the extreme agenda of the left. 
the extreme agenda that whether you are pro-life or pro-choice believes that people should be able to abort a baby the day that they're due to be delivered. They believe that climate change is the only thing we have to be concerned about. And if you follow anything in Europe and how the conflict between um, the Ukraine and Russia is impacting the um, energy costs in Europe where they all were like, oh, we're all, you know, for ending fossil fuels. And now they have no way to provide heat to people in France and Germany and where else um, this winter. So they're panicked about that. But those are the priorities, right? Abortion on demand, climate control um, on a federal level, taking your money, literally taking your money and giving it to people who borrowed money to go to college whether you went to college and paid your student loans or whether you chose to I did. To go, I right? paid everything Dean's out of pocket. Paid his student I loans. mean, I chose to go to work. So why am I dinged? Why do people who go into the plumbing trade, why should they have to pay for some graduate students student loan? Because also here's the thing. So here's a way to to test whether you're being manipulated manipulated <laughs> or or you know, influenced or maybe you're not a well-informed voter. Like when you hear student debt canceled, right? Like, like, how, how does, does that work? Like, do you right. understand that in bookkeeping there are two <laughs> entries, right? So there's you got to put it here and you got to put it there. That right. is how accounting works, right? So you can't just magically go, oh, it comes off somewhere. Yeah. So the question you have to ask yourself is where did it come off? So in the same way that they literally said on that. Uh, uh, inflation non-reduction bill uh, that you know oh we're going to we're going to decrease we're, we're, we're they actually claimed in that bill that they were going to decrease the, the uh, debt. deficit we're gonna we're right gonna by 300 by billion spending more money. that was last week then you know when when Joe Biden uh, did the executive order by the way entirely 100 percent unconstitutional there is not one thinker in this country who's like yep he can totally do that yep. in fact his own party leadership is on record two years ago saying nope he does not have the authority to do that they're going to do it anyway because there is no more rule of law and then after the election there's going to be a court case and then it's going to be overturned and everyone's going to be like, like oh, oh whatever but in the meanwhile they literally bought whoever those people are who are getting their loan forgiveness put onto the backs of taxpayers every taxpayer not just the rich i mean like i'm not anti-rich by any means I, my goal in life is to be rich i'm sorry that i would like to live very comfortably but i do not think it is insane to think that somebody working in a retail location with no college degree should pay one penny of college debt from somebody who went and got, you know, a degree in liberal arts or political science or women's studies or God only knows what with no job prospects. So they went into this with like, I'm just going to borrow all this money. I'm going to sign as an adult and say, I'm going to borrow all this money. And then, but they, it, like somebody goes, well, what about, what about when you file bankruptcy, you get to keep your house, which is not necessarily always the case. There's different types of bankruptcy. But if you choose to t file bankruptcy to not have to pay your mortgage anymore, you do not get to keep your house. How do you undo somebody's education that they're on the there that the debt covers? You can't education. Anyways, so All right. I'm frustrated. So so we're kind of as you guys can tell, Ranty. and I even did yoga this morning. I so this that. is me being extra calm. But you know, speaking about messaging and just sort of like what's out there and how we should be treating each other as humans. Like I'm a big proponent of fight my ideas. Yep. I will I will argue till the cows come home. There's a nice way to do it. There's a way that we can do it where we might actually all learn something. And then there's dirt bag ways of doing things. Yep. Like the gentleman who non-gentleman right. who left uh, that message for me. Yep. But also, you know, even within our own parties yep. and even, you know, across the aisle, guys, it's, come it's on, The right? mudslinging doesn't, I, I'm always Not even mudslinging, it's like blatant yep. untruths. Right. You know, like if I have to hear one more person call me a white supremacist, I am going to like- How do you, like, right. Lose this, my mine. business. Because, you know, here's, here's my question. 
And I mean this genuinely. So I'm responding to a front page article in the Union Leader that was about woke churches oh my goodness and so, uh, somehow people insane. made made news out of non-news so let's start with what everyone who's curious you can go to libertywins.org and look up this controversial list it is literally a list of churches in new hampshire where they a list of stand. like with with uh links to the churches that is in a table of which one category on this table of all the christian churches and now they're doing jewish churches and then they'll do mosques yeah, and then yeah, they'll yeah. do and it's genuinely only a resource for people who are moving to the state of New Hampshire because maybe someone wants to go to a woke church or maybe someone doesn't want to go to a woke church. Right. Libertarians actually may pick those two things equally, which is why the information was given out. So then this I, article, How does that make, how is, so there's this website, this is the way I took it. There's a website, so I was like, what website? I went to it and I'm like, okay, I have no idea who put this website out. Don't care, doesn't matter to me. There is a website that is like a wiki page type thing with all sorts of information about all sorts of things by some unidentified person who may or may not be a free sitter. I have no way of knowing as somebody who just went in and looked. And because this group, this person, this group of people, I don't know, made this list, that now means that somehow, Every single person who ever thought about moving to New Hampshire with the Free State Project is somehow anti-gay or, or, I, or I, some bizarre correlation. I, I, I don't even know, but I here's, here's oh, where well, I got, news. here's where I got like super annoyed. So the New Hampshire Council of Churches, there's a quote from someone, I don't even remember, I didn't bring the article, but it basically said something like, this is a dog whistle to white supremacists to something, right? So, so now we've thrown in all these words with free staters. First of all, it has nothing to do with the Free State Project. There might okay, maybe but, the person. But, but beyond that, Temi, I'm like, so so how are we supposed to argue against people who are literally saying there are these imaginary things that are going on that do not reflect the actions or words of anyone I know. Nope. But somehow we're going to ascribe these intentions or th we are we 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 meaning like i don't know in this case it was the quote from the lady but let's say the the far left or the name callers or the people are literally going we know what's in your mind but even though you're not saying it or doing it we it's know. there and because, therefore and we're gonna why? call you names Wait, that is literally okay. insanity and you know why we know it's there because you know that person. And we don't know anything actually about that person, but they know that person. And we once so, from so, 20 so years ago found somewhere some along the line, you literally have to ask yourself, maybe your intentions, you know, what, what, what's, uh, there's an Afrikaans saying, the, uh, the, uh, the what's the fart joke? The one who <laughs> like claims it laid like, it or something. like what's, well, how's it? I don't know. If you <laughs> smell it, you. Dealt it. If you dealt smelt it, it you dealt, dealt it. it. That, We've sorry, I was that gonna now. do it enough for con so it wouldn't be a legit <laughs> fart joke but literally if you smelt it you dealt it anyone from now on who calls me a racist i am going to assume you're a racist and then it's on all right so so, so before i go into what i wanted to talk about i am going to say this i have no problem with people pointing out people's voting records because right. it does tell you That's, something. Uh, that for, is an actual for instance in my district, and this is gonna. This is such a small. It's not a small thing. It's a bigger thing in theory. So, like in my district, there was a somebody posted recently, and I went and digging. Heidi Hamer, who's one of the current state reps in Ward Ten, she voted against um, changing the law so that children under the age of eighteen could not be um, charged for having a lemonade stand. <laughs> Okay. So I, that tells me something about Let's you. Let's make lemonade stands so, legal really, like, and someone voted against it. For children. Lemonade okay, stands lemonade for children. children. Must be licensed. Right? They, so that's like, what really? I was like. I was like, how do you even vote against that? Like, okay. Uh, so anyways, that kind of stuff, I don't mind people pointing out. Because if you want to point out the things that I voted for, I own them. I voted for them. But anyways, what I do not like, and I distinctly do not like it when we do it within the Republican Party, and I'm sure the Democrats probably get frustrated, but they're used to it because they do it all the time, is when somebody misrepresents their opponent, completely misrepresents their opponent. 
um, Ward 1, uh, uh, redistricting put um, the Ward 1 State Senate District used to be Wards 1 and 2, and it used to be Hooksett and Bow and all these different towns. It is now Ward 1 only in Manchester, um, Raymond, Hooksett, and now Goffstown. As a side note, I do find it interesting that the chair of the Election Law Committee that oversaw the redistricting for the Senate, for these race is running in this conveniently new, easier to win district. Well, because I, she I, would not have to run against Lou D'Alessandro. So there is that. Well, that, and also, of course, I mean, for anyone just following along, I did finally win Goffstown last time, yeah. and then they took it yep. away, making so my that, district. So that's 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 that's. Um, unwinnable. that's Projection on my part. That is not. I have. I, I. I can't say for certain whether or not she had influence on that or not. But it does seem rather peculiar that she would be the election law chair. Anyway, so so there's a primary that's happening. There are two candidates running. It's Barbara Griffin and it's Michael Yabovich. Ya I say Yakubovich. Yakubovich. I, I like Yakubovich. Anyway, uh, uh, Michael's from Hooksett. Barbara's from, from Goffstown. And they're both Republicans. They both served in the state house. Um, they're both running for this district that is currently held, seat is currently held by Kevin Kavanaugh, who basically knows he doesn't stand a chance in hell of winning because they, they built this district and whatever. So Michael, I know Michael very well. I know Marika, his wife. She helped us sell our house on Parker Street. They're wonderful people. They have a lovely son, a lovely daughter. Immigrants very well, much yeah. into like the American dream, yeah. understand having grown up in totalitarian yeah societies what so, that looks like and why it is really important for people to start saying no to the insanity so in a mailer i think there's multiple mailers and i've heard that they are paid for by barbara griffin i've heard that they're paid for by a pack that bob clegg who's supposedly is still a republican Isn't it supposed to say who it's paid I, but for i don't by? have them in oh, front of I me see. so i do not okay. know so I that's part you. of the problem you know getting people to actually Here's give say. you. So our reporting I, right now is a little I'm not 100% <laughs> sure who paid for that. I saw one, at least one side of one mailer that just totally distorts it. Um, and Barbara um, Griffin claiming that she's the only Republican and that somehow Michael Yakubovich- Wasn't she a Democrat? In fairness, I think they both at one point in time were okay. voted in Democratic presidential primaries. I don't know. Don't know, don't care, it's the past. But your voting record is your voting record. To say I'm the only conservative, I'm the true conservative, and my opponent Michael Yakubovich votes like continues to vote like a Democrat made me do like basic research that I would like to share with you. There are scores. There are numerous organizations that score um, state legislators. The House Republican Alliance, which is the Republican Party in the House. They score based on if the Republican Party platform and the New Hampshire and US constitutions. The New Hampshire Liberty Alliance scores based on um, Liberty, New Hampshire Constitution, US Constitution, Liberty perspective. Um, Americans for Prosperity in New Hampshire, they score based on conservative principles. J Michael Yakubovich has consistently voted better from a conservative perspective than Barbara Griffin. He um, has a 97% wow. score with the House Republican Alliance compared to Barbara ha Barbara um, Griffin's 95.7. Okay. Or not 95, 85.9. Sorry, my bad. Um, so we got 97, 97 85.9, right? New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, she got 78%. Michael got an A plus, I think he was like 98% or something like that, 97. And he would last year was the legislator of the year for New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. Granted, so that's basically a award where they say like you really couldn't do better if you believe he was the that top of the top. He was the be best. Free. Um, Granite State taxpayers, obviously pro taxpayer scored um, him at a 96% this term to Barbara Griffin's 75%. Michael received an A from the NRA and Barbara got a B. Um, Americans for Prosperity New Hampshire has endorsed Michael. 
you can't just put words on paper and say that they're true. You just can't. You can, but it makes me not want to support you at all. But why would you trust a candidate that, like that is making either, stuff right? up like that? Yeah. Because what else is she making up? I, you know, I served with Barbara. She's fine. I get along with her and everything. But when it comes to supporting a can candidate A over candidate B, I go back and look at their actual voting record. Your words don't mean as much when your voting record doesn't back them up. When you're a when you are a committee chair in the New Hampshire House, your Republican score should go up because you should be supporting the other Republican p things. So when your score goes down as chair, something's not good. You're voting Did it go with the down day. because I feel like her score is actually surprisingly better than I expected because I, I feel like maybe years ago it was she was It was even worse. Yeah. So, so I anyways, I, I, I'm going to tell people you can go out and find But more it's hard it, to beat Michael's scores, Michael which are like 97 plus. <laughs> Michael Yakubovich, you can find his information on his website, Michael, the number four, N-H, M-I-C-H-A E L the number four nh.com you can read his story about how he came to this country with like 140 dollars in his pocket and he's living the american dream and he just wants to provide the american dream for future generations if that's what makes you more democrat from the, his opponent i don't even like can't even wrap my head around why you would be anti-michael i'm sorry he is the real deal um, if you live in Ward 1 here in Manchester, if you live in Raymond, Hooksett, or Goffstown, and happen to be watching our show two weeks from today um, and in the New Hampshire primary, please cast your vote for Michael Yakubovich in um, New Hampshire Senate District 16. Um, that said, I did want to mention um, this coming Saturday at Lafayette Park, over our, uh, which is behind like St. Mary's Bank over on the west side. From 1 to 5 is uh, West Manchester Day. You can bring a picnic lunch, enjoy to meet, meet your neighbors. Um, they're doing all sorts of things for the kids. There's a three-legged race, limbo, tug-of-war, all that stuff. That is this Saturday the It 3rd. is a official tug-of-war yes. rope. And <laughs> on Sunday, I'm actually hosting an event at my house um, from 1 to 3. It is a fun Razor, um, and I have uh, Timothy Baxter, who's oh, nice. running for CD1. He's coming to talk to my neighbors and whatnot. Um, if you have any more information about that, if you want to just send us hate mail, whatever you want to do, manchtalk at gmail.com, and we will read it at least. We and like love mail, too. I if do. we put a little more love out in the yeah. world and a little less hate, things that will probably be trend but in a better, better direction But if you just well. need to do hate, Maybe just do it in writing. It's a little less, <laughs> little less nasty. Um, and I can save it that way. So, you know, well, we saved save this one, one too. So, so anyway, that's all we got for this week. Check um, out my book, The Ecstatic Pessimist. Make stories of hope mostly. Make sure you do your uh, some research on your candidates. You've got a, you're voting in two weeks on um, New Hampshire Senate race, New Hampshire state rep race. You're voting in the governor's primary, the executive council primary. You are voting in a CD1 primary and in a U.S. Senate primary, um, plus all sorts of county races, although it looks like the Dems didn't even file people for county stuff. So I guess that's an easy win. Um, that's all we got. That's all we got. We'll see you next week. Bye.